Hey guys, welcome back to the CNC Auto Channel. I'm your friendly neighborhood mechanic, and today we're working on this 2012 Toyota Prius, and it has bad rear shocks. So today I want to show you how to replace the shocks on the rear of this Prius. It's super easy, super fast. You can do this really quickly at your home, save yourself a ton of time and a ton of money. So come on, let's get into it. The reason why we're going to change the shocks on this Prius today is they're leaking their fluid. They're leaking the oil out of them. Come check this out. So if you look at your shocks and you see this oil or grease running out of them, that is an indication that the seals inside the shocks have given up and it's time to replace them. Another indication that your shocks are worn out on this Prius or any car is that your tires are going to start wearing funny. Oftentimes in what's called a cupping pattern, where the tire has a waviness to it, or a scalloping, or cupping. And it's a very regular scoop that gets worn into the tires, and it causes a really strange road noise, almost like you've got mud tires on, or you're going over some rumble strips. You can put your hands on your tire and feel along the top of the surface of the tire. Make sure you wear some gloves when you do this. You can feel the top of the tire, and I can feel here it's going like that. You can't hardly see it through the camera, so I'm just sort of describing it to you, and I'll show you some pictures of what that looks like. But this leaking shocks here is causing that wear pattern on our tire, so we wanna get this fixed because tires are expensive. So on this Prius and many cars, the bottom of the shock will be held on with a bolt and a nut. And then the top oftentimes goes into the car. And in the case of this Prius, you can get to it right under this little panel. To remove the top of the shock, it's super easy on one of these Priuses. Look right here. We have an access panel and all you need is a flathead screwdriver. Stick it behind there, pops right off. There she is, the top of our shock. Now, this is held on by a 17 millimeter nut and there's an Allen head in the top of the stud. That is a six mil Allen head. So I've gone ahead and chopped up a six mil in my torque wrench. That fits down inside of there and you can either loosen the wrench like this or you can hold the wrench and tighten the stud and it'll take it apart. Watch, I'm gonna, since I've got it chopped up in this torque wrench, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten that. Watch how easy this is. Done. Now the top of our shock is free. You just dig in here and get all of this rubber isolator material out. There it is, just flopping around. Now we can go downstairs and we can take the bottom part of the shock off and just drop that shock right out of place. Come on, let's go do it. And here's that top of that shock, just like we saw from above, just sort of flopping around right there, ready to come down. So the only thing holding on the shock now is right down here, we've got a cross bolt with 17 millimeter nut and a 17 millimeter head. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. So I'm just gonna set my 17 millimeter wrench on here. And I've got a 17 millimeter socket in my wrench, in my torque wrench here. And we're gonna go ahead and hold that nut and buzz out buzz out that bolt so there's the nut now hold your shot just like that the shot comes out ready for the next one so here's the old shot we've got it out now here's the new one and if you can see here they look a little different well this one that we took out of the car has this boot so you just lift that up and take it off and it's going to go on top of the new shock so we need to get this little piece of rubber out of the way comes with a new nut you see how this shock is starting to expand it's a good idea to go ahead and let that shock expand a few times what that does is it mixes up the oil inside of here and gets it ready for its work so you can just put it nose down and squeeze it, let it expand out. Do that a couple more times. And what that does again is just gets this thing ready to do its job. So let it expand out, squeeze it down, 
let it expand out. I'm trying to hurry up the process a little bit here. And it doesn't matter if you do it this way or upside down. It's just cycling this piston in here a little bit. And what that does, again, is just gets this thing ready to do its job. So let it expand out. Squeeze it down. Let it expand out. I'm trying to hurry up the process a little bit here. And it doesn't matter if you do it this way or upside down. It's just cycling this piston in here a little bit. Oh, yeah, that feels a whole lot better. Starting to really feel the resistance there. There we go. All right. So now I just take off the nut. Take our boot here. It's already got this little spacer right there. Just slide this down. Sort of center it up. There we go. All right. Now, here's the new one. Ready to go back into the car. So we got our new shock. New shock is ready. We're going to go ahead and just aim and stab that top part in and then come around here. Now that the top is in, we just put this lower part in, get our bolt through, start the nut by hand. Again, 17 millimeter. We can tighten this thing up. Seventeen millimeter wrench, seventeen millimeter socket. Done. Now, if you're taking one side off at a time, you don't have to worry about putting some sort of a jack or something underneath the axle. Uh, it's it's not going to fall out of place or anything like that because the other side's holding it in place. But when you want to stab the top of the new shock back up, you may find that it's necessary to put a jack underneath the suspension and raise it up. And what that does is it compresses that shock and it pushes the top of it right up and through the hole there. So watch as I, okay, watch as I jack this thing up. So as I jack this thing up, Watch the top of this thing come up through there. You see how it comes up through there? You want to make sure that it's up there as at least that much because now we can go ahead and put our rubber isolator back on. It just goes right over the top, centers up into the hole there. And then next, we're going to have that upper washer. goes on like so. And now we need to put our nut back. Now this was the nut we took off, which was a 17 millimeter. But it came, the new shock came with a nut that has the nylon locking inside of it. And it also looks to be a little bit different thread. So we're going to use the new one. Now the new one is not a 17 anymore. It's an 18. So we're going to go ahead and put the 18 millimeter wrench on there. Now just like we did to take the shock out, we're going to go ahead and use the 6 millimeter Allen in the top of that new shock. And we're going to be turning the stud to the left and holding our wrench. And what that's going to do is it's going to tighten that nut down. So watch this. And you just want to tighten it until it starts to get really tight. And this rubber isolator right there, that little black rubber, starts to gush out. See how it's sort of puffing out there? That's when you know that you're done. And as you can see here, a number of threads will be showing at the top of the shock. So what do you think? Was that easy or what? We put the old shock out, new shock in. You saw how easy it was to tighten up. The only thing left is now this little plastic cover. And again, on this Prius, man, that is so slick just to have that job done. Other side, just the same as that one. You'll be amazed how quick and easy it is to replace your rear Prius shocks. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. And God bless.